455, and then we'll go into requests later on. 455, I am resolved. I think that's a good song for New Year's Eve. Standing together. I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have allured my sight. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. I will, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to follow the Savior faithful and true each day. What he saith, do what he taileth, he is the living way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to enter the kingdom paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, till I will enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we pray now, Lord, that you would meet with us once again. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the fellowship that we were able to have here and the enjoyment, Lord, of one another's company. And I, I ask, dear God, that you would have your, your way here in this, this time that we have together. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. And at this time, uh, Barb is going to come. And she's got a special number with a special friend. And we got the kids in here because I wanted them to be able to see. All right. I just wanted to say that this song, because um, the little ones may not understand it, when, um, when we accept Jesus in our heart, there was somebody very special who was the person that paid that price for us to be able to go there, and that's Jesus. And this song is about that, about he is the mercy that came and saved us.
stood there and wondered how could this be that someone so guilty had just been set free my chains were all broken I felt Thank you, ladies. <laughs> I had the privilege of being able to see Zadie's reaction, and that was a blessing. She was enthralled. I'm sure the others were the same. Well, let's see. We're going to try some uh, requests right now, okay? Wow, Connor. You're quick. 395. And then who was it? Somebody said 28. Jo Gino, you said 28? So 395 first. 395. Let's just do one verse at a time, okay? <clears throat> From each song. Let's all stand on this one. Standing on the promises of Christ my King Through eternal ages let his praises ring Glory in the highest we will shout and sing Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God my Savior Standing, standing I'm standing on the promises of God. And then somebody hollered 28, I believe it was Gino. This is a good, good hymn. Number 28. Oh, Lord, my God, when I in awesome one Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. Great thou art, how great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Amen. Next one. Yes, Sam. 305. 305. Oh, this is a good one. (coughs) 
days are filled with sorrow and care. Hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are left at it, Calvary. Jesus is very near. Burdens are left at it, Calvary. Calvary, Calvary. Burdens are left at it, Calvary. Jesus is very you can have a seat now. Uh, Vicki, you have your hand up first. 366, 366. After this one, we'll have Pastor come up and do his announcements. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, day I will never forget. After I've wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend, he met the need of my heart. Shadows is failing with joy, I'm telling, he made all the darkness depart. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were washed away. And my night was turned to day. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. Hey, man, that sounded great. Hey, Pastor. I didn't join you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, am I on? Yeah. All right, as far as announcements go, folks, uh, we just a uh, recap here of different things. Uh, um, I know that there was a little bit of confusion about the Bible reading charts this morning. And almost all of them went out with, with, with uh, bulletins. So whether you wanted one or not, you got one. So if uh, you, I think that there are more done up now. So how many did not get one? You did not get one. There are several of them back there now. And uh, you'll be able to get those Bible reading charts. Use them. I used, actually, I, I used my one from last, from 2022, for a second reading. And what I did is I just used it with a marker. I went through and it had already checked it all the way through for 2022, but then I went back through with a marker and just highlighted it. Uh, you really don't have to do that if you're reading through more than once or something and you want to take more than one of them. Uh, you go ahead and do that. We'll just make sure everybody gets one first and it looks like everybody's got one that needs one. Uh, if there's How many of them are back there, Ken? You made up another 15? Okay, just make sure you grab one before you leave. Um, and same thing with the church directories. If you did not get a church directory and you want one, let's make sure that you get one. And uh, any changes with that, please put those in writing so that Brother Kendall will have those and we can make some updates on that. But this next week, we are having on Tuesday, we're having our ladies' Bible study. We're having uh, Bearing Precious Seed. And on Wednesday, we are having kids' clubs on Wednesday and, uh, and the uh, Ignite team on Wednesday night as well. And uh, it helped me with these pop cans. Uh, I know that many of you have pop cans and you don't really want to mess with them, that sort of thing. If you bring them in, that's wonderful. Have them in some kind of a bag or something like that. And I'll have a container ready for those. And those do add up. It's a, you know, it's a little bit of a pain messing with them, but it does add up, especially over a year's time. This will be a big help for us for Ignite Youth Missions Conference. All right, ushers want us to come at this time. We'll receive our our evening offering, early afternoon offering. Amen. 
Amen. Kevin, why don't you pray for us, please? Amen. Draw me near. Well, let's have another request. 300. Joe would like 300. Oh, yes. <clears throat> I must needs go home by the way. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er get sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. Five oh seven. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> Five hundred seven. Amen. I come. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. Amen. How about one more? Barb. 529. <clears throat> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Let's stand together on this one. Oh, 
When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. refrain one more time. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. You may be seated. Brother Josh seems to have something he'd like to share with us. Amen. Let me share with you. A song I'm a little late to sing, but uh, I've been wanting to sing this for a few years. So the song's been a blessing to me. It's a Christmas song. I heard the bells. And it's the most perfect song for this Christmas, Henry Wadworth Longfellow wrote this poem as a widowed father of six children after learning that his eldest son had just been severely wounded fighting in the Civil War. The words paint a beautiful picture of the despair he was feeling, but also the hope he maintained despite his circumstances. I heard the bells on Christmas Day, their old familiar carols play. Wild and sweet, the words repeat of peace on earth, good will to men. I thought how as the day had come, the belfries of all Christendom had rolled along the unbroken song of peace on earth, good will to men, of peace on earth, good will. Then from each black accursed mouth, the cannons thundered in the south. And with the sound, the carols drown. A peace on earth, good will to men. It was as if an earthquake rent the hearthstones of our continent. And made forlorn the households born a peace on earth, good will to men, of peace on earth, good will. Then in despair I hung my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, good will. Then peal the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail and the right prevail. A peace on earth, good will to men, 
Till ringing, singing on its way, the world revolve from night to day. A voice, a chime, a chant sublime, a peace on earth, good will to men. Of peace on earth, good will to men. Of peace on earth, good will to men. Amen. Why don't you come on and play us a song on harmonica? Yeah, I told the pastor that I want to play my harmonica, but when I asked to play that song, I am thy, oh Lord, that was the song I was going to play. So. <laughs> Play it. Sounds different on the harmonica. Aren't you glad you don't go to a stuffy church? <laughs> we are definitely not stuffy. I like that. <coughs> I was privileged to grow up in you know, this kind of a church where we, you just never knew what was going to happen. I remember, one, I remember one time the pastor was going through the, was getting a message, looked over at a fellow over on the front row, and he said, why don't you sing a couple of verses of such and such? A, and the guy looked at him and said, Why? We were there, Kathy. It was Dean Head. And he was just, he was just why? He said, because I want you to, Dean. <laughs> it made me so good. But anyway. Well, let's take our Bibles and turn to a couple different places. Look to Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And uh, we're going to, over the next while, I'm not going to say that over the next year, but uh, the, the theme of, of prayer is something that's on my on my heart. Uh, if I was to Acts chapter two, I think that uh, almost all of us, if we had to rate our own prayer life, if we had to rate our own prayer life, and we gave ourselves a rating uh, zero being abysmal, non-existent, and ten being angelic. Uh, the throne of you know the, the throne of grace you know the, you're a movable uh, a movable prayer warrior you know and you've got the ninja outfit on and everything and uh, if we had to rate ourselves somewhere between zero and ten most of us would be less than five I think that most of us we would rate ourselves less than five uh, I think most Christians that I've asked that question to uh, usually rate themselves at about a one or a two out of ten. 
Some of that is just out of the humility aspect of it. You know, who's going to say, bless God, I'm a great pray, prayer warrior, proud of it, and I'm the humblest guy you're going to find, you know? <laughs> uh, who's going to say that? But, uh, um, but I think in reality, because of the, method, the methodology, the method of reading our Bible, we have our Bible reading chart. Now, we can feel pretty good about our Bible reading if we are somehow reading some type of routinely reading, uh, whether that be using the, the, the Bible reading chart or whatever. Uh, but prayer seems to be a little more slippery than that. It, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to nail down our prayer life. I've, I've read books about prayer warriors. I'm thinking, my goodness, after, you know, after 15 minutes, what are you praying about? You know, uh, and, and yet I've been in prayer meetings that have gone on for three or four hours and it seemed like minutes. And uh, so uh, I really believe that there, there's an awful lot of room for growth. I think maybe we can agree. Can you agree with me with that? There's a lot <coughs> of room for growth in each of our personal prayer lives. See, I'm, I'm not coming in trying to get you to tell me how much do you pray, but you need to ask yourself that question. How much do I pray? If it's so important, how come I spend so little time doing it? And uh, uh, so let's look in Acts chapter 2 in verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, I know a prayer doesn't save anyone, okay? It's the heart condition toward God. But the, man, the Bible does tell us that we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus. The Bible does tell us about here in verse 21 that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There is something about verbalizing our need for salvation that is a benefit to us. Uh, uh, you know, there's not a perfect sinner's prayer. Uh, and if there was, when somebody would repeat it, it would probably not be from their heart, and you would just get a repetition of something that's hollow and empty. Uh, but here the Scripture says that prayer has to do with salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Look over in Psalm chapter 18. And I could pick dozens and dozens of different Scriptures. And some of the studies that I've done, they're, they're, at different times, I've seen this kind of a statement or this type of a, uh, you know, th this kind of a comment made that verbalizing something really helps to solidify it. If you speak it, if you speak it, speak it out loud. If you say it out loud, it really, it, it, it has a hook to it. Um, you know, uh, for instance, reading scripture out loud, there is something to that. When you stop and you read special scripture out loud, scripture that already speaks to your heart, you start reading that out loud and it's as if God is joining you in that, in that scripture reading. Well, it's the same type of thing with prayer. Uh, Psalm chapter 18 and verse 3. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Okay, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And in that verse, I think that there is, <clears throat> it says that he's worthy to be praised. I think what we see, and we see in other, other scriptures, that praise to God ought to be part of our prayer life. That's not exclusively what it's saying there, but you see that intermingled in scripture after scripture after scripture, Praising the Lord. Praising the Lord. And uh, so, uh, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. And then over in the New Testament, again, Romans. Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. 
in verse 12. Romans 10, 12. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. I'll read it again. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon Him. And let's pray. Lord, as we just look into this, uh, just, be, just start to maybe crack the lid open just a little tiny bit on this wonderful opportunity that we have of prayer. Lord, I pray that you would speak to our hearts and encourage us. Lord, I pray that you would teach us to pray as John taught his disciples also to pray. And Lord, I ask that you would help us to be people of prayer. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, uh, I got stopped here not in the last few weeks by a, a family, and they slipped me a piece of paper. And they said this, they said, would you please pray for our our child, adult child. Uh, they just need to have, and then the statement was, I know the people of your church pray. Now, I didn't say this out loud, but in my heart, I thought, oh my, I hope we live up to that standard. I hope that we do. Do we have compassion? I believe that yes, we have a very. Com I believe we have a very compassionate church. I'm not so sure. If please, I'd, I'd say that honestly. I'm not sure that we have a church that prays fervently. I don't know that. How am I supposed to know that? It's a very private thing, a very personal thing. Um, in the four years of me being here, I probably have seen. This morning, the altar was used as much as it ever has been used in four years, this morning. Okay. Uh, and I, I, it's a kind of interesting that that happened on the day that I'm going to speak on this topic. Uh, I want our church to be a church of prayer. I want this to be a house of prayer. And you know what? Immediately what the Lord smote my heart with? Are you a man of prayer? Do you think maybe there could be some enhancement to your own prayer life? I'm taking this personally. So if it sounds like I'm saying you, 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 that's, please, that's not my intention. My intention is I'm burdened about my own prayer life. I'm burdened about it. I want to be more intentional with my prayer life. My wife and I have a routine with our Bible reading. It's very odd that we don't sit down together and read our Bible together in the morning. That's very strange. It's got other events are going on and we're out of the house or, or something. Matter of fact, we just had to catch up on a couple of days yesterday. Uh, and so um, uh, we got that down. How about, how about your personal prayer life? I mean, you and God. You and God. Uh, how is that? Prayer is so important, why is it so hard to do? Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's because if there's one thing that Satan fears is the prayers of God's people. The most powerful thing that you have is your prayer life. I mean, that's the most powerful thing that you possess. In the spirit realm, to affect the spirit realm is your prayer life. I had a, a lady came to me years ago. I was uh, in a church down in, uh, in Florida. She had given a testimony about uh, the, the children's home that we were involved in and such. And, and uh, how, you know, many kids were taking kids that were in trouble and trying to help them. Then she came to me and she said, um, Brother Dufour, I, I just don't know what to do with my daughter. And she went on, and her daughter, her daughter was really was in trouble, was really trouble. And I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it as a zinger. You know what I mean? I didn't mean to have a gotcha moment. But I, I looked at her and I said, ma'am, I said, when's the last time you prayed and fasted for your daughter? And it was, 
Why is that so hard? No, I'm, for, for us, please, I'm, for us. Why is it so hard to be consistent in prayer? I'm going to tell you why. It's because it's the most powerful thing you can do, and spiritual warfare takes place. How do we exercise spiritual warfare? In our prayer closet. You know, you can read the Bible until you, your eyes hurt, and it's fallen out of your ears, and the whole deal. I mean, you got that whole thing memorized, you got that whole, and you may not have even communicated with God one iota. But with a broken spirit, when you cry out and say, Oh God, you have just touched the throne of heaven. And you cause the spiritual enemies to tremble. Oh no! He's touching the throne of God. Oh no! She's reaching out to the throne of God. And so the devil starts throwing everything he possibly can to get you to stop praying. I jotted down a few things just a moment ago. I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. I got plenty of places to go here, and I'm just trying to I'm just trying to get started with this, and we'll, we'll go head back to the house here. But spiritual warfare takes place when Satan tries to convince us that we have somehow forfeited the opportunity to fellowship with God, walk with God, associate with God, and certainly to speak with God in prayer. That is a spiritual attack. <coughs> oh, excuse me. spiritual attack. The devil's trying to stop me right now. Uh, uh, but it, it, it's spiritual warfare. Now, friends, we, sometimes we stop praying because we don't feel worthy. Here's lies. I jotted down a few lies. God, do, God doesn't want to hear from me. I'm not holding up my end of the deal. You ever felt that way? How can I go and ask God for something? I'm not holding up my end of the deal. I let God down. I can't go to him. I let him down. I've got to start doing better. Then I will go to him. And the devil just sits in the back going, hee, 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 hee. The devil just sits in the back saying, got him, got him, got him. I don't believe that. In, in most cases, it's not that Christians are arrogant and think they can do it on their own why they don't pray. I, my experience is most Christians don't pray because they don't feel worthy to pray. And that is a, that is a uh, gaslighting by the devil that makes us feel inadequate. You know that nobody in, them, in their flesh is worthy to go to the throne of grace. No one, never at any time whatsoever, it's worthy. Why? Because inherently we are sinners. The only way that we can approach the throne of grace is because we're forgiven. And we have been justified. And we wear the righteousness of Christ. If anybody had to go to the throne of grace because of their own righteousness, there would be no one going to the throne of grace. And the definition of grace is unmerited favor. We go to the throne of grace not because we are worthy, but because He has made us worthy. God wants us to pray. So I don't think I can pray, you know. I, oof, been an awful lot of water go under that bridge, Pastor. I don't know. I don't think I, I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with prayer. Man, I've I've. Uh, uh, I had a guy tell me one time, I tied prayer and it just didn't work. I had a guy tell me that. Uh, but uh, the greatest affront to God that you can do is not embarrass him because you're coming to him as a sinner with sin in your heart. The greatest affront to God is that we don't go to him. God help us. God help us. Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, it said, And he spake a parable unto this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 
Jesus said that. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5, Jesus said, And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. He said, Well, I'm not going to pray because I'm a hypocrite. No, it said, When thou prayest. It didn't say, he didn't say, If thou prayest. He said, When thou prayest. Pray. So I don't know how. You're a pretty good talker. Come on. Pray. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get it right. The only way you're going to get it wrong is if you don't pray. Just pray. Just talk to Him. And I used to sit in the front row when I was in, at Harvest in Iowa. And I was, I was an altar worker. And I'd come down at the time of the invitation. I'd be sitting on the front row there. And the pastor would go like this and tell, have people deal with different people. And I loved it because I would hear people pray at the altar. And I tell you, one of the most blessed things, I never quite get over it, is to have somebody come up to the altar and just pour their heart out and say, God, I don't know what I'm doing. I know I can't go to heaven on my own. I'm going to trust you to take me there. The least eloquent prayer, but the greatest prayer that you could ever pray. And I heard that dozens of times as people poured their heart out to God. It didn't sound flowery. They didn't, you know, sing the, you know, the uh, Handel's Messiah. They didn't say amen at the end of it. They, I heard one guy, one, God help us to live long and prosper. I had a guy pray that prayer one time. And when he was done praying, was an usher, young Christian. When he was done praying, I said, may the force be with you, son. I know, I know. We just, we just merged our trek and wars. Okay. But God wants us to pray. That's where we're just starting. God wants us to pray. God wants us to pray. Say, so, but what about, I, I've got this sin. God wants you to pray. How do you expect to ever get victory over that sin if you don't pray? Say, so, wait a second, I got this problem. I'm bitter about this or that. Well, pray. Well, the Bible says if I hold bitterness against my brother, I'm supposed to go, I, I'm supposed to go back to my brother before I come to the Lord in prayer. Pray. God will, God will take that hammer and beat that out of you. Pray. Pray. So I just don't feel adequate. None of us are adequate. Pray. I don't have time. Don't, don't even say that. Don't, don't say that. We don't have time. I don't know how. You know how to communicate. So God wants us to pray. Here, I'm going to go through those lies again because this is powerful and I'll be done. God doesn't want to hear from me. You don't understand. God does not. You don't understand the kind of person I am. I'm a Christian, but I haven't been living like it. God doesn't want to hear from me. That's a lie. Liar. That's a lie. I'm not holding up my end of the deal. You have no end of the deal to hold up. I let God down. I can't go to him. Do you think that God expected you to be perfect? I've got to do better. Then I will go to him. Now here, this is what prayer does. Prayer draws us to God. Prayer encourages us to live righteously. God, uh, prayer encourages us to forgive one another because we're now standing in the forgiveness of him. All of those things are products of prayer. And if the devil can stop you before you get to prayer, you're never going to accomplish those things. We, can't, we, can't, we won't have forgiveness in our heart if we're not praying. We're not going to mature as a Christian if we're not praying. We're not going to have victory over sin if we're not praying. And so it's a steps toward, prayer is part of the steps toward uh, growing in grace and becoming more and more like Christ. So we're going to have some messages on prayer, and we're going to have some challenges on prayer. Uh, pray for one another. Pray for our missionaries. The, um, oh, wait, I just, is it, uh, who did I tell you, Kendall? Schultz. The Schultzes are coming back from Tanzania. They're, they're, they're done in Tanzania. They're, they're coming off the field. That's the third missionary that we've had in the last two years come off the field. Not retire, come off the field. We need to pray for our missionaries. We need to pray for one another. 
When you know about somebody's need, pray for them. You don't have to get on the phone and talk to everybody else about it. Pray for them. Right. When somebody here, here's a little, little help. When somebody said, I just had this happen today. Somebody said, Pastor, uh, boy, I really need your prayer about such prayers about such and such. You know what I did? I learned this from, a, from an old saint of God, Joe Murray. I went over there and stuck my hand out. I said, well, let's pray. I said, right now? Right now. You ask me to pray for you. I want to pray for you right now. We'll just step over here to the side, put my arm around him like that, held his hand, and we prayed. And he's, he's got a dilemma in his life. He said, Pastor, will you please pray for me? I don't want to say, well, yeah, sure, I'll be glad to pray for you. And then maybe over a tuna sandwich or something, I'm going to pray for him. No, he needed to hear me verbalize a prayer, a heartfelt prayer to God for him. And my prayer helps to strengthen him. Okay, that's just the kind of stuff that we, we need to use the altar. We need to use it. Don't just, just get, over, get over yourself. Get over what people think. And use, you got a burden, use the altar. You see somebody else at the altar, don't hesitate to come up and just sort of stand with them. You don't have to say, what's your burden? You don't have to do that. You just put your hand on them, pray for them while they're praying. I'm telling you, folks, it's gonna, it'll do, it, it's, I'm excited because it's going to do something special for us. We're going to be people of prayer. Let's pray together. Father, help us to be people of prayer. God, I feel so um, inadequate and insufficient. But yet, God, you've called us to pray. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to be people of prayer. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're just going to Play the invitation and you do as God would direct you. And uh, if you feel like using the altar, you can do that. If not, right there in your seat, let's all stand.